stand for the bride. We're gathered here together this evening in the presence of family and friends, but also in the presence of our Savior Jesus Christ to unite together this man, Parker Gross, and this woman, Hannah Lee. Marriage is an honorable estate. It was instituted by the Father. Therefore, it's not to be entered into lightly or unadvisedly, but in respect and awe for who God is. Christ said, He who made them in the beginning made them male and female, and for this reason a man shall leave his mother and father, and the two shall become one. The Bible teaches that marriage is to be a permanent relationship of one man, one woman, freely, totally committed to each other as companions for life. And so it's into this holy union that Parker and Hannah come to be joined. Who gives this woman to be wed to this man? Her father and mother. If you would, you can be seated. At this time, the father of the groom, Al Gross, is going to come and share a word and read a scripture for us. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> I've been asked by Hannah and Parker to read scripture over them and to pray. First, I wanted to say that God has worked wonders in bringing Hannah and Parker together. The two are from Texas went off to college in California. There they met other friends and formed the uh, Biola Adventure Club where they met and their relationship grew. Parker and Hannah have a dream of life without walls. You may be able to discern that from the venue tonight. 
<laughs> my prayer is that they stay in God's Word Amen. and His will so that their dreams and actions will be in unity with God's plans for their lives so their joy will be complete. The scripture I have for the couple is from Paul's letter to the Colossians. In Colossians 3, verse 12, Paul wrote, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, close yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love which binds them together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as a member of one body you are called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, songs of the Spirit, singing to God with the gratitude in your heart. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, the Father, through Him. Wives, submit to your husbands, as fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives, and do not be harsh with them. Amen. Amen. Parker and Hannah, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and He saw that it was good. In fact, the Bible records that every time God created something, He always paused to say, this is good, except for one thing. He looked down upon the man that he created one day and he saw that the man was all alone. And God said, it is not good that man should be lonely. So I will make a companion for him, a helper suited for his needs. And as always, God was right. He knew that we all needed someone to weep with us in times of defeat, exult with us in times of victory, sometimes just to be silent in times of meditation and to sing with us in time of joy. So the scripture records that God caused a deep sleep to come over the man, and from his side he took a rib, and from that rib he fashioned a woman. St. Augustine said about 1,500 years ago that woman came not from man's head to be ruled over, nor from his feet to be trampled upon, but from his side to be close to him, from near his heart to be loved by him. And so for a period of time, things were just as God intended for them to be in the land of paradise. But one day something went wrong. Adam and Eve, instead of being content to be God's creation, they wanted to be gods unto themselves, to live the way they wanted to. And they began to live as if God no longer existed. And when their relationship with God was destroyed, they found out that their relationship with each other was no longer the same. And into this world came some very ugly things. In place of honesty, there came deceit. In place of trust, there came suspicion. In place of love, there came irritation. And since that time, a lot of marriages have seldom been what God wanted them to be. But God is not willing that husbands and wives should suffer. So consequently, in the fullness of the time, God sent forth His only Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus lived in this world for 33 years, demonstrating the love of God, forgiveness of God, and the reestablishing of relationships with each other through God. And then at the appointed hour, He died upon a cross for my sin, for your sin, Parker, for yours, Hannah, for all of us here in this audience this afternoon. He died for our sin, but He is risen and He offers free salvation and an abundant life and relationships that are wonderful. So marriage is a companionship that involves mutual commitment and responsibility, and you two are going to share these things alike. Someone has said that when companions share a sorrow, the sorrow is cut in half. When they share a joy, the joy is doubled. Parker, as your childhood pastor, I exhort you, to dedicate your home to your Creator. Take His Word, the Bible, for your guide. Give loyal devotion to His church in a local setting and unite in mutual strength these important institutions. Live your lives as willing servants and true happiness will be your temporal as well as your eternal reward. If you'd pass your bouquet and turn and join hands and face each other. 
Parker, do you take Hannah to be your wedded wife, to live together with her after God's ordinance of marriage? Will you honor her, keep her both in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep yourself only for her as long as you both shall live? If this is the desire of your heart, if you would answer by saying, I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> and Hannah, do you take Parker to be your wedded husband? to live together with him after God's ordinance of marriage. Will you honor him and keep him in sickness and in health and forsaking all others, keep yourself only for him as long as you both shall live? If this is the desire of your heart, if you too would answer by saying, I do. I do. <laughs> Parker, if you'll repeat the vows after me. I, Parker, take you, Hannah. <clears throat> I, Parker, take you, Hannah. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer or for poorer. For richer or for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death shall part us. Till death shall part us. And Hannah, if you'll repeat the vows. <laughs> I, Hannah, take you, Parker. I, Hannah, take you, Parker. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer or for poorer. For richer or poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death shall part us. Till death shall part us. And we have symbols of your love here this afternoon as well. We have the wedding band. A symbol, Parker, if you would take that and place that on the third finger of her left hand and repeat after me, with this ring, with this ring, I thee wed. I thee wed. We also have the wedding band, symbols of your love to each other. Hannah, if you would take that, put it on the third finger of his left hand and repeat after me, with this ring, with this ring, I thee wed. I thee wed. Great. The father of the bride is going to come and share a prayer with us and afterwards lead us all in reciting of the Lord's Prayer. So as he prays a blessing on this couple, if you would pray silent in your blessing and then be ready to recite the Lord's Prayer together. George. Lord God, this is such a sacred moment and words... You seem to fail at this time. All I can think about is, Lord, that you're our God and Father, those who, who love you. Parker and Hannah were made by Christ and for Christ. Mm -hmm. They belonged to him before they were ever ours. For they, for Lord, you graced us to be their stewards. And, and mentors. Lord, we entrusted them to you. And in due time, in due season, they themselves, for themselves, embraced the good news of Christ and the hope of eternal life in Him. So Lord, again, in a continuum of devotion, we again entrust them to you keep them preserve them in christ watch over them make your face shine upon them be gracious to them turn your face toward them and give them peace keep them one in christ lord i pray that their one love would be to jesus i pray that their one daily attachment would be to his cross. The one ambition would be his kingdom. For Lord, all things hold together in him. And that certainly includes husband and wife. Lord, I pray you would always humble them, not by the force of your will or act of coercion over us, but Lord, by the winsome life of Jesus. It is the way the truth, and the life. And in the humility of Jesus, Lord, I pray that they would always love each other, always forgive one another, 
always give of themselves to each other. For not to us, not to us, O Lord, but to your name be the glory because of your love and faithfulness. If you repeat the Lord's Prayer with us. Our Father, Father which art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If you would continue just a moment of silent prayer and meditation as Parker and Hannah share in communion together. Gentlemen, as you stand up here and you are witnesses to this wedding, I want you to know that you're not standing up here just because you look good. Uh, there's a reason and a purpose for this. Parker's chosen you to be his best men, and your duties do not end this evening. I charge you to hold him accountable to be the man of God that our Lord wants him to be to pray for him, to uphold him, maybe from time to time do a check with him, rebuke him. Uh, but in the future, as your relationships with each other continue to grow, uh, that you hold him up, you be his best man uh, in a godly way. Ladies, you're here this evening because you are beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and you are Hannah's good friends and likewise I charge you in the future to hold her up in prayer the study of the word and sharing of spiritual notes and emails so that she can be the woman of God that he so desires so I give you that charge in the name of the Father and the Son and our Holy Spirit for as much as you, Parker, and you, Hannah, have consented to live together in holy wedlock, you've expressed your commitments before God in this gathering of family and friends. You've given and pledged your love and shown that by the giving and the receiving of the rings. Then according to the laws of God and the laws of man in the state of Texas, I now pronounce you husband and wife. What God has joined together, let no man put asunder. And you may kiss your bride. <laughs> the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Grab your bouquet. 
And now let me present to you, oh my goodness, for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Parker Gross. <laughs> Well, I wish uh, you could have had the bird's eye view from up here, but uh, I'm going to dismiss you at this time. If you would, we need to get the groups back here for pictures. I know you want to talk to them. Please don't do that right now. We need to get these pictures done. So I'm going to let you go to the seated area. There are some refreshments, some desserts you can have. Do not touch the donuts. That's in lieu of a wedding cake and you'll get your donut later. But uh, if you would, at this time, I'll dismiss you. Go to the tables. Try not to speak to the party. You'll have that opportunity in just a little bit. Thank you.
it's right, it's right to feel the way I do, because, because I love you. It's wrong to say that I don't think of you. When you say those things, oh, it makes me blue. And I'll be happy. Just, just to be by your side. three years now um, and then so I met Parker we did like a transfer program we transferred into Biola together um, and we got this crazy idea during the summer to start the Biola Adventure Club um, with all this hiking and backpacking and stuff like that um, so we organized that the club turned out to be a big hit um, and we had our first first event at this cliff jumping place um, and Hannah was one of the people who attended. Um, so Parker and I were busy, you know, with logistics and stuff like that. So uh, we didn't get to talk too much. But I remember afterwards, we all ate dinner together at the cafeteria. Um, yeah, it's called the cafe at Biola. But uh, and then Parker and I went back to our dorm room. We were roommates, um, and we were talking. And he's like, "Yeah, there's this one girl from Texas. She was pretty cute." And I'm like, oh, that's Hannah. She has a boyfriend. <laughs> um, and he's like, he's like, oh, bummer. Um, but I also remember just a few months later, I found out Hannah was single over Facebook somehow. And I was like, hey, Parker, Hannah's single. And he's like, what? Uh, and so that was like kind of during winter break, uh, 2011, and. Uh, I flew out to Texas to drive back with Parker to Biola, and uh, we had organized to meet Hannah, so what, there's Dallas and there's Austin, about three hours in between, and we had organized to meet Hannah in the middle at a Bush's Chicken, which, for, the, for people who aren't Texans, that's a fast food restaurant. So we each drove an hour and a half to go to this fast food restaurant. Um, and yeah, so I guess that's like your first date, right Hannah? Yeah. Exactly, that's what makes it more of a first date. So, so yeah, pretty much the rest is history. We road, we road trip back, and Parker couldn't stop talking about Hannah for the whole 22-hour drive. Even though he hung out with her once at Bush's Chicken. And, yeah, so, cheers to you guys, and happy marriage, and, yeah. Bushes. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> also, has anyone seen any car keys? Because I lost mine. No, those are not. everybody, my name is Laura. I'm Anna's twin sister, so I've known her since before birth. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> um, yeah, so, um, I remember this little story. Um, whenever Hannah and Parker first started dating, I never even, like, met or talked to Parker, but Hannah was just, like, talking about him and just was saying how like he's an awesome godly guy and I think he's like really good for me and all this stuff and I told my best friend at school I was like my sister just started dating the man she's gonna marry so here we are um and um and I just want to say you know um is three words that I want to say tonight and they're humble joyful and gentle um and she just like this really embodied what those three things look like for me, and I think everyone got some awes, amen, so um, I think we all agree. So, you know, thanks for being an awesome sister, Parker, you got a good one. Um, and a story about being humble that I think is really cute. Um, Maddie and Hannah, I guess, had a conversation about Parker early, before they even started dating. Whenever Parker was like, I don't know, texting you or whatever, and surely Parker doesn't like me. Like me, Hannah Parker, girls. Whoa. <laughs> anyways, adorable. Um, so anyways, may your marriage always be one that reflects um, Christ's love for the church. So, to Hannah and Parker. Microphones give me seizures. <laughs> no, not really. Uh, so, Parker and I have been friends for over 12 years. Uh, we met a youth group at church. Um, it's pretty funny how humans come in contact with millions of people throughout their lives and occasionally decide, hey, uh, I think I like this person. I'll keep hanging out with them. Uh, during critical times like high school and middle school when uh, judgments by your classmates are swift and harsh, who you associate yourself with, uh, can really make or break whether or not you make it in with the popular crowd. For whatever reason, I decided to abandon good instincts and select this scrawny, freckled kid, this, this scrawny freckled kid from church. Uh, little did I know, Parker would become one of my most faithful companions through the many phases of growing up. Uh, a few of my favorite phases uh, we've shared together are the first job phase, uh, where Parker and I work together supervising kids' birthday parties at inflatable bounce houses. <laughs> Uh, if you know Parker, uh, what we really did was wrestle with the children and eat their cake and pizza while they were playing. <laughs> True. This, uh, this newfound money led from led to the Walmart clearance section phase. Uh, this is a time in life for us when we first had money and we bought ridiculous things like ninja stars, wooden swords, nerf guns, and machetes. Most of the stuff was instantly broken into bits in the battlefield which was the gross backyard. The same yard where we spent time building bunkers, obstacle courses, and used pellet guns to single-handedly dent the squir Carrollton squirrel population. <laughs> Getting a few meals out of them along the way. Uh, this is Texas. After high school, we became, after high school we became slightly more classy. We purchased pipes and pipe tobacco, and upgraded to legal hunting and license fishing practices. Uh, we also found spots at church, assisting a youth pastor with leading groups and camps, and joined the worship team. Parker's newly discovered skills with the guitar brought on another phase. This time, for the first time, a girl expressed interest in him. <laughs> Word spread around this gr our, our group of friends pretty quick, and this pretty talented and very sweet girl from church had a little crush on Parker. Upon hearing the news, Parker must have decided he couldn't find space in his busy squirrel hunting schedule, so he turned her down. This girl is now my lovely wife. <laughs> <laughs> On a serious note, Parker. 
<laughs> Parker's adventuring has been a key element of his life with Hannah. As many of you know, Parker, when he went off to college, turned his love of adventuring into a channel for his ministry when he helped find the found the Biola Adventure Club. Woo! Yeah. Parker has always been on an adventure or always been on a, been an adventure. Come back. Can I answer a text real quick? Whether it was hunting, camping, fishing, skiing, riding motorcycles, or running around the woods with a machete screeching like a velociraptor. Sounds like a rabbit. Let's hear the screech. Uh, a lot of people become more reserved and less free-spirited as they age through their mid-twenties. And I was glad to see that corporate America had no hold on Parker. <laughs> when last summer we met up for a road trip, Parker had just been on a solo hike through the mountains and showed up in my hotel room bearded, smelly, sweaty, and covered head to toe in dirt. <laughs> Rather than taking advantage of the nice amenities in a hot shower, he proceeded to pull back the, the curtains of our 14th floor window overlooking downtown Las Vegas, drop his pants, and exclaim, Hello, Las Vegas! <laughs> while exposing himself to the street below. <laughs> Hannah takes a unique person to connect with a machete-wielding squirrel eater. <laughs> marrying, marrying Parker is phase one of the initiation, and phase two will be when you come back to Carrollton and kill a squirrel in his backyard. <laughs> This is to a happy marriage and many small scrawny squirrel eating children. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. I know a lot of you came really far distances, so on behalf of my family, Parker's family, thank you so much. It means a lot to them, I know. Um, Alex told Parker's side of that uh, Bush's chicken story, but I remember Hannah, when she told me she was meeting Parker halfway, like, I didn't even know who he was. I'm like, who is this guy? She's like, well, he's from Texas, and but I don't like him. And I was like, then why are you waiting an hour and a half to meet him if you don't like him yet? But after she met him, I was like, there, something's going on. And then two months later, when he asked her to be his girlfriend, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, Hannah, you're so sweet. One of the sweetest people I've ever met. Even if you weren't my sister, I would still think that. Um, I think Parker makes you even sweeter. I don't know how it is, but he like brings it out of you. Both of you are really sweet together, and you've always been very unique. Um, <laughs> you can all attest to that if you knew Hannah when she was little. Her favorite pair of shoes were pink cowgirl boots that she wore everywhere. So, yes, Parker, I think that you, you just add to her uniqueness, and she's perfect with you. So, welcome to the family. Um, I'm very happy for you both, and I wish you a really good marriage. Cheers!